What makes 100 kilometers hard? Is it absolutely hammering yourself? Yes. Is it who you ride with? Yes. Is it the most elevation you can achieve? Maybe. I don't really buy into Band of Climbers hardest 100k in the UK. Just being the most elevation you can get in, but it's a fun challenge. And one that I think I've got a route that can one up. So I'm here doing a recce of one hill on said route to see if I can achieve that. Yeah, perfect. So this is near Glen Cairdiog. What in? Near Glen Cairdiog in the Cairdiog Valley. <laughs> and I'm happy with my route. And with that, on April 15th at 10 a.m., I met Ed Laverack, and of course, with my dad at the Chainbridge car park in Llangollen. Managed to avoiding all of the kayakers there for the river festival, and we set off on this stupid, magnificent ride. So for those of you who don't know, this challenge is based around um, what's called the Band of Climbers Hardest 100 Challenge. The premise is simple. Within 100 kilometres or less, you have to do as much elevation gain as possible, never using the same road twice, not crisscrossing, and it all has to be road. It's not gravel or off-road. There is uh, a winner currently in the Peak District, um, but with so many crazy climbs around Llangollen, I thought that maybe I could do better than that. It's not good enough to just have lots of hard climbs. You need lots of linker roads so that you never cross yourself. If you have lots of hard climbs, but they all come to a head at the same point, you're going to cross yourself and you can't use them. The example of that around here is we've got the old shoe and the new shoe, two big climbs, but they come to the same point. So you can't ride both of them uphill. So that's where this valley and the Kiriog Valley come into their own. There are so many little linker roads, parallel climbs to go up and down the same bit of geology. Um, and essentially you've got the hills north of the D Valley, which are the, the Cluids. You've got this set of hills that we're on now in between the D and the Kiriog Valley. And then to the south of the Kiriog Valley, you've got the Berwins. So within a very small space, you've got loads and loads of climbs. So I really did think there was something I could set up. And I came up with this route that had, in theory, about 400 metres more elevation than the current winner in the Peak District. There's lots of other areas of the UK that are very hilly. I'm going to say this again, because in Ed's comments on YouTube, loads of people were like, oh, you clearly haven't been to Yorkshire. Of course it was Yorkshire. Yorkshire's not as good as you think it is, everyone from Yorkshire. Um, it was, <laughs> yeah. So people are saying, oh, North Yorkshire would be better, but it wouldn't because you can't get between these climbs. There's not as many linker roads. So that's all I wanted to say right, on that. The problem as well is if you want to go for segments on Strava, you can't really. Because, for example, the ladder there, we didn't do all of it. We did a part of it and I exploited the fact that there's a second turn off that takes you back down uh, in order to not come out at the same point as Frombach, which we're doing now. So it means that if you're after yeah, the right. glory of doing complete Strava segments and saying, I did this whole climb, it's very hard to do uh, in sort of uh, this format. All clear, Ed. So back to the video. We're one climb in. We've done sort of done the ladder from a funny angle. I have filmed the ladder before, if you want to watch that. Descended back into Llangollen. And now we're coming up from Bach. I think you've got too much power assist, Father. We just about avoid a bit of road we're going to cross later at the bottom of Ash Gwynand. Um And yeah, we go up Vrombach. I should say, there's a bit of an elephant in the room here, and lots of you will be watching this thinking, Ed is a much better cyclist than you are, Nick. And let's be clear, I know that. 
I do not need to be told. Ed is a much better cyclist than I am. You know, former national hill climb champ, uh, under-23 road race champ, um, and his FTP is at least one watt per kilo higher than mine. When I shared this ride, I wanted to do it at my own pace as fast as I could. Ed said he'd like to come along, and I said, great. Then other people wanted to come, and I said, it's going to get too big. Um, so we kept it small, which apparently opened up the floodgates for loads of people just going, oh, Ed's going to be in zone two with you. He'll be waiting at the top of every climb. He's way better than you than you are compared to us. I don't know why me sharing a ride apparently just made it okay for everyone to tell me I was shit. My favourite comedian, James A. Caster, said about hecklers, what you think is funny is actually just rude. And that is exactly how I felt there. Like, yeah, I know Ed's better than me. Why do you all need to tell me that? Um, so I'd lose to him up any of these climbs, but over a hundred kilometers on hills I know, I was really confident that I could at least not embarrass myself. Yeah, I'm planning to do four and a half to five watts per kilo up every one of these climbs for the day. And I challenge anyone to come along and do that in zone two with me. You're all welcome to, if you're gonna do it in zone two. Here, we've hung a right at the top of uh, kind of the ladder from back area. And that's where you start to see the issues with this route. The road surfaces are appalling. But we work with what we've got. They're quite unapologetic with it, aren't they? Oh yeah. The time that I was like 16 and nearly dying and you were just like, we can't see even a house for miles. <laughs> Here we go, onto the worst descent of the day. I'm gonna have to come up this road one day. Calling it a road is generous. This was terrifying. You plummet off the face of the earth, and I knew that we merged with a main road at the bottom of this. You go through some houses. Um, the surface is horrific. My ride partners for the day both had rim brakes. There's me sitting on the top tube to get my center of balance lower on both brakes, and I have unclipped one foot because I'm that scared. My brakes are full lock. That is as slow as I can get. So there's a moment here where I turn left up a driveway just so I'm not going downhill to let my rims cool. <laughs> And here we are in Glyn Kyrdiog. Glyn Kyrdiog is like the southern base of this ride, um, if Langochlen's the northern base. How old were you when you first did this? 17. Uh -huh. Oh well, I didn't do it. <laughs> well, yeah. I remember seeing you fall off yeah. and being the concerned father that I was. Kept riding. Kept riding. You were. It was a treat for me and my dad to reminisce about lots of rides we've done together whilst on this ride and kind of share them with Ed and we may have bored his socks off, but you know, it, it is a nice opportunity. This is Churchill. This is the steepest sort of 300 meters on the entire route. It's stupid. I forget how hard it is every time. My dad and I drove up it on the way here and it was terrifying. It's a monster of a climb. It's arguably not as hard as Ashquinant on the other side, but we couldn't fit that into the route going up. So I'd say this was the hardest bit of climbing. The only redeeming feature is the road surface is quite good compared to some of the other climbs. So it was really fun to get Church Hill in. And as you heard my dad and I reminiscing about there, I've fallen off on this climb before. I've pushed my bike up it. No shame in that whatsoever. I've got a few shots of Ed behind me. Um, please don't think I'm putting these in to be like, look, I dropped Ed Laverack. I have no doubt that he's just pacing himself for the day and I'm riding like a knobhead. There is no ego in anyone's riding today. We're just surviving. Look at these shots. Isn't it beautiful? Little bit of regrouping and off we go again. I should take this time to thank my father for remounting a camera that he used to use for safety when commuting. He's since donated to me for safety when commuting. It only does 1080p filming, so I don't really use it for my YouTube stuff, but I use it for my commutes. And I asked him if he'd put it on uh, for this ride. And he said yes, and I'm so glad he did, because I just didn't have the mental bandwidth to think about when to turn my cameras on. Have a nice day. So I lack footage for lots of reasons. We'll get to the other reasons later on, but my dad's camera just kept rolling. So there's lots of footage of, of me and Ed and we don't tend to get footage of me, do we? I love this climb slash descent, Nant. This is the one I came up with Chris the other week. Just really photogenic with these hairpins and into the Kyriog Valley, stunning. Lovely following this Sainsbury's van. 
This is the climb that I said coming up has loads and loads of signs saying long vehicles do not come this way. <laughs> this van clearly didn't consider himself a long vehicle. As we come down here, we're getting more into what the rest of the ride is going to be like, by which I mean truly crappy surfaces. Oh no! Yeah, the car coming this way. Yeah. And that's because none of these roads really exist except for to service agricultural places. This is the road that I wreckied on the way out. I was worried about it because it's a private road through some barns. Well, it's not a private road. It just goes through um, some stables and stuff. And I wanted to check if it was public access. You have to do stuff like this to make these routes work. You have to do stuff like cut through cafe car parks, cut through farmyards, take roads that you wouldn't normally think of. Um, and so I just needed to be sure that they were actually passable. If they were passable, I was happy. And now we get into unknown territory for me. I've never been south of Glencairiog up these hills. I have ridden this area a little bit for various reasons on like 200k plus rides, but I've never been up this hill. For me, this was hill of the day. I know Ed said in his video he had a different favourite hill, uh, and I totally get that. It was a great climb as well. But this, through the forest perfectly smooth tarmac which was in short supply on this ride really steady climb this is called glen killer on strava but it really isn't a killer it's an incredibly steady gradient average is just over 10 percent and it does get up to 20 percent on one very short corner which adds interest but it's really steady you know I, I really did enjoy it and i've never done it before so it was quite um interesting for me then we come over the top here of these hills south of Glencairiog, and this really is where the bad road starts. <laughs> it gets truly rough, and at this point I started to feel quite guilty. Look at this turn. This is a road, this is a public, like, highways road in the UK. It's just not been resurfaced for about 50 years, and it is only used by farmers in tractors and 4x4s, so it's, it's truly rubbish really truly rubbish and it led to quite a lot of banter about whether these are roads what defines a road indeed i've titled my strava ride at the end of this the word road is so subjective but you see it goes through patches of perfect tarmac stunning views perhaps i'm not talking enough about just how beautiful this whole ride was you know it Say you did it on a gravel bike so you didn't care about the surfaces whatsoever and you had gears to spin all day and that was all you cared about. Then I think you would just be blown away by the views over both of these valleys. And on a sunny day, it's just spectacular. Um, we really just had such a great time. So as we descend here, yeah, the road is rough. Look at the beautiful forest on the hill in front of us. My dad particularly is being quite cautious on these descents. Can you blame him? He's he's 61. If he falls off now, we might need a new hip. <laughs> I'm only joking. He's uh, still a man in his prime. But you get the idea that we, we would be a bit cautious. It's no fun having a spill and ruining the rest of our day. So now the reason I put in that really dodgy bit is just so we can come straight back up. There's a B road that goes from a place called Selatin back to Glencairiog. And essentially it runs along halfway down a ridge line, descends all the way to Glencairiog. And what I've done here is taken us down the roads off it, down to the valley, straight back up to that road, down to the valley, straight back up to that road. And all of those roads are crap. Like I say, very pretty. You get the odd house like this one that we just went past that I just want to live in because the views are amazing. The location is amazing. Eh, amenities. Not so many, but very pretty indeed. And it's things like this that you have to build in because to get over 3,000 metres of elevation in 100 kilometres in the UK, you almost can't have any flat road. That's just dead kilometres. So every little bit of extra elevation that I could get in, I did. Even if it means essentially like not quite double backing on yourself, but if it means taking a right turn to just go left and left again and come almost back to where you were if it gets you 10 meters of elevation do it yeah just front wheel lifted 
I have left in a lot of chat. My, my dad's camera particularly has quite a good microphone compared to the others. Um, as long as you don't mind the whir of his e-bike. So I hope you appreciate that. I know I'm talking over it a little bit, but it was it was a really nice atmosphere on this ride. Just the three of us just chatting all day and kind of enjoying the experience as well. I know this is a stupid challenge. And look at this road surface. Yeah, this <laughs> this was certainly up there. It wasn't the worst. The worst is yet to come, but it wasn't good, was it? Um, yeah, it was a stupid challenge and it was hard, but it was within all of our ability. So none of us are just like bonking and in in defense mode. Do you know what I mean? We could we could enjoy the whole day pretty well. Aye, being an old man. Ah, oh, my dad said being an old man there because he was going slow. An old man taking on the hardest 100 kilometres in the UK with a smile on his face, yeah. <laughs> so this is Dollawern. Um, this is approaching the few hills that Ed said were his favourite of the day. We go up a crazy set of switchbacks on this next hill. Then we go straight down a climb called Pomfadog, which I would have loved to go up. And I've actually got footage of me going up that I've not processed yet. Give me a shout, by the way, if you're ever interested in seeing these hills, but not as a full gas effort. I feel like people don't like those videos as much, but quite often when I come out, I'll have to have a go at some hills and not go full gas. And I film them just in case and I can show it off. A recurring theme of this video is that I point out landmarks to Ed and my dad, like, look to the right. Do you see that house that's miles above us? That's where we're cycling to. Um, it's probably not as endlessly charming as I think it is when I do that on a ride. Like, look how hard this is going to be. Uh, but there was the first feature of such. This climb is mental. It's a very rough surface. You've got dilapidated barns all around you and you've got hairpins galore as you climb out of this valley. It has, in my opinion, everything the British hill climber could want, uh, including debris all over the road to add a technical challenge um but it's just magnificent look at ed with his camera in his mouth there very flattering another hairpin around another abandoned barn very exciting um and i think it's about here that my dad swallowed a massive fly i had to edit this out um but yeah he swallowed a massive fly and ed said he's gonna have to swallow a spider now which is a good joke for uh, for british people or anyone who knows that nursery rhyme what we struggled with on this, although it, it's not quite as steep as Church Hill, because the surface is rough, you're using your entire body. There's no sitting and spinning even in your lowest gear. It is engage your core, engage your arms and shoulders, uh, and really work with it. But look at these vistas as we turn these hairpins. It's magnificent. And I should say, on this climb, you know, I said at the beginning, I wanted to do this ride as fast as I could. I knew that with my dad's motor and with Ed's inherent cycling ability, that if I set the pace, they could keep up. So I went hard. And we got to here, and my Garmin said, you're one second short of the KOM. And I thought, I can't believe that. We're so far through, and we're one second short of the KOM. And that was the case on a lot of these hills, actually. I don't know if, like... Rhiannon's putting Epo in my coffee or something, but I could just, I felt like I was putting out good times on each of the climbs. This is descending the climb called Pontfadog now. Um, in some ways, it's the prettiest climb. It's got this really lovely feature of an almost 180 degree turn across a river valley. Um, it's got quite a nice surface. And this actually features in a GCM Plus documentary because the London to Hollyhead race in the 80s used to come up here and famously riders used to push their bikes up it um, and they do it in that documentary, they do this climb. It's beautiful um, and Nick's YouTube bingo, I'm going to come back and give it a full gas shot <laughs> at some point. I bet you Giles Drake has the comm, of course he does. Where doesn't he have the comm around here? This is when things get silly, okay? I know, I know you're thinking, things were already silly, Nick. They've been silly for some time, but this is where they get really silly. Climbing out of Pont Vadog, we go over what I've called, um, I think, Pembrin and then Uroca Reverse, which takes us up to um, the, the top of Franca City. 
this bit of road's been resurfaced and is magnificent. Um, Ed said about one of the other roads, very similar to this, that it almost reminds him of balcony roads in the Alps. And yeah, a much less grand scale, but the same kind of concept. You're going through the woods, you're on the side of a mountain. Surface is magnificent. And this is where I said to them, we've got two options. We can keep going straight on this road, and I've cycled all of it, and I know that the surface is not good, but okay. You know, the sort of thing we've been on. Or, just up here, there's a hairpin left and a road I don't know at all, but I know is reputed to be very rough. That takes us to a different summit, and we get about 100 metres more elevation out of it, and it's stupid steep. Ed and my dad both said, ah, let's give it a go. So just so you know, I warned them. They knew what they were getting into. I really did warn them. <laughs> so here we go, taking that turn again. You can see why I lose my rear view camera in a little while. I do apologise for that, folks. It becomes impossible to see. And like I say, I just didn't have the mental bandwidth to be thinking about keep your cameras clean, keep your front camera on, etc. And for me, this was the hardest climb of the day by some margin. It's well over 10%, which isn't a particularly high gradient compared to the stuff we have been doing, but look at it. It's essentially a dirt road. There's little islands of tarmac left, but it's very loose. Um, as my dad said, the, the steepest gradients you hit are the potholes uh, coming out of the potholes again. It looks like we're just like controlled and calm going up this right. I'm doing 400 watts in my 3634 in order to maintain that. You can't stand up. This is steep as anything. On the camera, we look composed. We are anything but. I mean, you know, I am one wheel slip away from falling off all the way up here. How Ed is doing this with a camera in his mouth, I do not know. Uh, it was crazy. It was the sort of thing I live for. The sort of challenge that's just like, well, I'm pushing my strength on the bike to its absolute limit. I'm pushing my handling of the bike to its absolute limit. And if I fall off, it's not going to be a big problem because I'm only going one mile an hour anyway. And then we come out to what I think means we've hit tarmac again. Doesn't last very long. Truly crap. Um, but it is a road. Anyone who says it isn't a road, come and fight me. No, don't, don't fight me. But, you know, it... it it is a road. I don't know what else I can say. It's horrible, and I wouldn't recommend you ride it on a road bike, and I regretted it to an extent. Um, but it is a road. So now we descend, and this little farmhouse area is where we would have come out if we were going straight up, so we wouldn't have done any of that elevation. Uh, so I'm glad we did it, but now we're about to go up a climb that I know again, because I've cycled. Surface is very rough. Climb is very steep. So again, I'm, I'm pushing pretty hard here. I want us to go quite fast. Um, but my dad has started struggling to an extent. Um, I think we didn't stop as often as he'd like because he knows I get a bit <laughs> shitty about it, which, yeah, I'm not proud of. But I like to stop as little as possible. Um, so I said, oh, we'll stop for a bite of food at the top of this climb. He sounded very relieved indeed. It doesn't look too bad yet, does it? But you see that little tunnel through the trees at the top? This section of road is steep. Yeah, a bit lifestyle. One thing you should know about an e-bike motor is that they want high cadence, or certainly my dad's does, for it to be able to assist. If you're doing 50 or 60 RPM, um, because of the torque, it just doesn't assist very well. So here, my dad just had to put more power in, turn the assist up, and get the crank spinning. Uh, so he just shot yeah. off. And we were saying, Ed's um, Wahoo there was reading like 35%, 40%, and he was going, oh, it's a little blip, but 50%. We are the shy of 50k, 49.8. Yeah, I'm not going to make the full run. Before. I'm down to four bars. Okay. The official range is 120k. But they're not but compensated for the fact that <laughs> you only intend to go up or downhill. Yeah. <laughs> Tell you what, when you do elevation like this, mm. in a short this time, it completely resets your, I don't know, your climbing meter. Mm. So it, 
what you think is a hilly ride is yeah. not when when you actually search for hills. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, we, we've been home. If you know, if we hit two thousand meters of climbing on a hundred mile ride, we're like bloody hell, that was a hilly yeah, ride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So as we descend down, not quite into Chirk, but past Chirk Castle and around to Frong City, I should tell you that just before that stop and during that stop is when I hit my uh, obligatory dark place on any hard ride. I started to think I've kind of misled. Ed and my dad. My dad's bought an e-bike for this challenge. Ed's done a six or seven hour round trip and I've made them ride dirt roads this whole way and I started to think like this isn't really what they were promised. I got in my own head a little bit and I got quite sad and that for me is always a sign that I have not fueled adequately. Right that's nonsense. They knew what they were getting into. I never told them definitely come it'll be perfect tarmac. They wanted to get into it, so there was no need for me to be sad about that. So I shoved three flapjacks in my face, and I can tell you that I wasn't sad for the rest of the ride. We're just coming down through Vronka City here, which is... I love this town. It's like built on the side of the mountain with all these funny little rabbit warren uh, sharp switchbacks and steep houses on the side of the hill. I've said before, it feels a bit like um, the sort of houses you see in... Uh, in Tuscany in the Giro and I do I think it's quite fun um so yeah we come down that was called Methodist Hill and we go straight up Erdacher here um as I mentioned I've done Erdacher in another video I've been up it quite recently it's a beautiful climb um it's one I want to do in summer because it is quite challenging when it's wet there's a section of road that's concrete and it's just really really slippy um, and we had issues with that this ride but yeah lovely we're beyond halfway now and I was feeling strong to be honest with you so just wanted to make sure we were still making good time oh yeah Lovely, thank you Nick, with an unhelpful landmark. Um, as I said in my video of this hill, the scenery is magnificent off to the right. Um, I'm probably in the rear view camera and I can show you none of that. There's a road to the left here actually that I really want to ride, but there's exactly no reason I would ever be going that way. But it looks like a fun road, so maybe one day I'll cut this hill halfway <laughs> and I'll have a little go at it. Um, my dad was trying to conserve battery by this point, so he wasn't punting it to keep up with me. Um, being the knobhead that I am, I just, just yeah. kept going, which is cruel. Yeah. <laughs> We're at the top of Erdacher. We've done maybe two thirds of the climb. Absolutely shagged. My dad is struggling with, um, with battery. Here they come. Go on right. Just keep on going, I'll... So, I knew at this point at least, I had this one big redeeming factor in my mind that at least the roads are all good now, or all pretty good. A panorama walk gets a bit um, gravelly because it's next to these big cliffs. Great but view. Yeah, roads are good, sun's shining, the views are incredible from now on. The Kiriog Valley, although it was pretty, is not as pretty as the D Valley in my yeah. opinion. This place is magnificent. So to come in for the the panoramic views here and we've just said this is the crazy steep climb. I've maybe left in too much footage. Um, ah, but my channel's rubbish, right? I'm never going to be appealing to the YouTube algorithm so who cares if it's a 40 minute video so you can see um, my ride partners for the day descending this absolutely magnificent landscape um, and it's not a very long descent because it's so fast you just plummet <laughs> and we managed to really enjoy it actually I was scared coming into this and this climb is why I made sure I had aluminium rim brakes not carbon on this occasion I couldn't go with heat it's like you're dropping off the edge of the world it's insane isn't it <laughs> It's, uh, I felt a lot better than last time I dropped down there. Yeah, because you're on disc brakes, not carbon rim brakes. Yes, that's the one. Um, as we saw us in town, a nice river. Yeah. And a sheep boat. Yeah. 
don't know if that little guy, but Wales came out there. Wales, I hope you know I love you and I say that with affection, but touristy town, beautiful bridge, big van of sheep holding everything up through the middle of town. Yeah, where else could we be? Um, there's a little stretch of main road here and I started taking it upon myself. I've organized this to drive the front of our little group all the time. I want us to go faster, so I will take the front. And then we go up and um, the sun climb. So that's the sun in on our right. And it's a little switchbacky climb up to the panorama walk. I've never cycled this one before, but you know when there's a road, I know exactly where it starts. I know exactly where it finishes. I never happen to have taken it, but I know the area so well. I know exactly what's in store. Um, but it was actually, it was very pretty and a different perspective on Llangollen. So it was very nice, very nice to do it. Um, we're almost down to just dad cam. I got one little bit of footage down here, but really I'm a terrible YouTuber. Ugh. So I do apologize. Look at that like cliff face ahead of me. Quarry and then Castellanos Bran on the hill to the left. Yeah, I'm, I'm delighted with all of this. It was a, a lovely little bit of road. Yeah, that house on the left was for sale. Suggested to my dad we buy it as a holiday cycling pad. I've been so complimentary about people who buy second homes in Wales before. Why not join the gang? Um, I knew that at the bottom of this climb, as we turn left, see if you can spot the ruins on top of this hill here, the castle itself, um, that this is where we'd be saying farewell to my dad. There's a cafe at the bottom. We were going to have a little regroup, um, coffee and cake, to spur Ed and I on for the final 25%. And my dad's e-bike battery was dying, so he was just gonna roll back to the car, uh, and he, he said he was gonna have a sleep. A leisurely cafe stop, and then go for a little nap while we did the rest of the route. I have to apologize, I didn't film anything else. So you miss the old shoe, though Ed got a little bit of footage of it, um, and you miss the grim reverse, which is a shame, because it was um, a fantastic piece of road. Descending the grim was beautiful. There was one moment where bunnies, little rabbits, what's a baby rabbit called? I don't know. Hundreds of them sprinting out in the road, following us around. It was like a scene from Watership Down. It was fantastic. Yeah. And not filmed at all. So you'll just have to take my word for it. The route goes that way. The cafe's there. I'm pausing mine just in case. You know that climb? Well, it's gone now. But when we were coming down there, you could see across. Yeah. And it just went up. That's not what we can do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, poor bikes. Um, that was stupid truly stretching the limit of what can be defined as a road. Um, ah, they were all roads, stretching what can be defined as tarmac. They'd all been tarmacked at some point. Um, but, well, whether it officially classes or not, that was unbelievable. Uh, unreal. I'm knackered. I'm not sure I even got much good footage because I was just so focused on doing it. I really wasn't very focused on filming it. But hopefully there'll be something in there between dad cam, my rear view cam that I was just on the whole time and uh, any front camera footage I got. Uh, and as Phil Lovett would say, to the climbers, the spoils. Uh. Hello. It's been a while since I've done one of these. I didn't want to leave that video 70k in, um, so I thought I'd better give a little wrap up at the end. Um, I'll keep it brief because I know it's been such a long video already. But this is uh, my Strava um, activity for the event. And what I'll do is I'll just talk you through briefly where I left it. We left it at around 70k. Yeah, there you go, the cafe. Um, if you look at my little blue dot. After the cafe, um, Ed and I went along zigzagging up and down. Like I say, it just gains us 10 metres here, 10 metres there. Um, and then back up to the panorama walk, up a nice climb. We were going pretty steady by this point. Went along, um, down and up what I call the hardest climb on earth. I've done it with David Raynham. I've done it with Chris. I've now done it with Ed. It's hard. 
Um, of the old shoe, a climb that if you watch my channel, you probably know very well by now. You probably watch other hill climbers. I've done several videos on it. Um, it's where Nationals was last year. So Ed and I got to relive Nationals um, with a decent effort up there. Down this quarry road, the back of um, Pentredor, I think that's where it goes. Um, down to Brunaglois and back up the far side of the Grim, which is a lovely uh, climb and road. This quite desolate moorland up Moila Gamlin. That's the name of this mountain or hill here. Um, down the Grim, which was a really fun descent. I think I said on the voiceover about all of the rabbits, the baby rabbits running out in front of us. It was cool. Uh, down into Glindafrdui. I've said that terribly. Sorry, Welsh people. Over the bridge. And then we two up TT'd the A5, basically, because we wanted to get it done as soon as possible. It's quite fun going fast when you're on a main road. Why not? And then finally, to end, this is what I was saying. You need to take weird routes to get the extra elevation in. So rather than just going down the A5, which we could have, and we would have ended at like 97 kilometers, um, I made us do this zigzag down a farmer's track. I made my dad recce this, by the way, and on this hairpin here, um, scrapes the underside of his car. So I'm very sorry, father. Um, then we go up, we can climb back on ourselves up the A5 climb and up this final part, get an extra 50 meters of elevation or something. Stuff like that um, really does make the difference of, of breaking this record or not. Uh, breaking this record sounds very grand for basically just plotting a route that a team did as marketing. So this is the ride. Um, I didn't quite get the 99.6 that Ed did because I paused my Garmin at one point and forgot to restart it temporarily. Uh, 208 watts uh, power because you're just not putting any power down on any of the descents. Weighted power 263, but let's face it, weighted power is just a made up number uh, to flatter people. What I wanted to show you was that I did around 4.5 to 4.8 watts per kilo up all of these climbs consistently. Um, and it meant getting some cups that I wasn't expecting as we went round. Not a KOM on Churchill, fancy that, but a decent power. Um, yeah, seventh of all time up the, the Glyn Killer that I said I really enjoyed that climb. Um, then again, some cups on all the weird climbs. Dollar Wern, this is the one I said we almost got the com. Depending where it ends, we did take a com or we didn't take a com. Um, Heaven or Hell is the absolutely horrible rough climb I made them do. Um, Uroca Reverse there. All of these, you know, I'm doing... Say 305 is about 4.5 watts per kilo for me. Things over 305, pretty good. Um, then even the old shoe, you know, so late into the ride, I'm still doing 3.7 watts per kilo up there. I'm really happy with that. Um, KOMs on up and down sections mean nothing. It just means you didn't stop for a drink at the top. But I'm I'm still very happy with that. thank you very much for watching guys ed's video got an amazing response from lots of people sort of re-inspired them to do a challenge like this and i just think it's so much fun i love maps i know i'm a loser i love maps i love plotting things like this and seeing what i can do and then riding them as well it's such a great uh, intersection of the boring nerdy things i love so i am gonna do more stuff like this in future um I've got something in mind, hopefully over the next month or two, that's probably about double this length and climbing, but we'll see how that goes, right? Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one.